What's up guys? Welcome to another RE Source Masterclass series interview. And I'm excited today for the second time we have Megan Anderson on the show, super strong female rock star. And you know, honestly, I've been really looking forward to this interview. I wear my favorite shoes. My Jordans are on today. I got my Nike stuff on today. And we're just gonna be real. Like, I'm not a resource guy today, and that's not Megan, badass female MBS highway behind the bre breakthrough girl. It's just two people talking, and that's why I'm excited. Just a real open conversation. So thanks for being with us here today, Megan, all the way from Florida. Yes, I'm excited to be here. And I must say, those new shoes that you bought, I approve. And those were Stacy. Stacy bought those for me because she knows that I'm too conservative and I would have never bought them. So I came home last night and they were on the table and I was so excited and I didn't want to ask her how much she spent, but I did. And then I was mortified for a second, but then I enjoyed the gift. <laughs> she's a keeper. Yes, she's a keeper. So uh, for those, we have realtors and stuff that watch the show and entrepreneurs. So anybody that doesn't know Megan, first of all, awesome person, super strong female in the, the mortgage space. Uh, she's got an awesome podcast called uh, Behind the Breakthrough. She's the VP of Marketing at MBS Highway. I love, uh, if you look up her uh, Behind the Breakthrough podcast, her opening statement in the intro says, every master was once a disaster. And I just love that one-liner. It's an amazing setup to what you do, uh, and which is uh, Behind the Breakthrough, tell stories of today's leaders, uh, really before they were leaders. And I, I love the concept. Um, I think it came maybe out of uh, the Amplify experience. I don't know, but we're gonna unpack that here in a minute. Um, but let's get to know you real quick. I don't want to spend a ton of time here because there's a lot of good meat potatoes that I want to get to uh, with you later. But talk us through, for those that don't know, like how you went from Boise State, right? Boise State mm -hmm. to yep. the Institute of Psychology of Eating, which is fascinating, yes. to MBS Highway, to now 40 episodes in to Behind the Breakthrough podcast. Man, it has been a journey. I'll tell you what. So starting all the way from the beginning, in college, I got a job as a personal trainer. And I realized while I was training people that I never actually had a fitness goal myself. I just was always this person that was pretty in shape, you know, but I never pushed myself. And so then I started to do bodybuilding shows and I did bodybuilding shows for a couple of years. And I started to place at a national level. So I went to try and go and get my pro card one year. And during that process of just chronically dieting for years and building this kind of brand and reputation, so much of your worth was kind of consumed within your body and what it was that you looked like. And I started to realize through these people that I was training and coaching because that's what I would do as a personal trainer. I took my whole platform online. That's how I generated clients. But I started to realize through doing these shows and coaching these individuals that we all really didn't have a very great relationship with our body. We were simply controlling what we were eating and how much we were exercising based off of fear. And that fear was what our life would be like if we weren't in what we considered this perfect, ideal, what society wants body image. Is that what you mean by not a good relationship? Like, because I'm guessing you guys were all in phenomenal yes. shape, probably top 0.01%. Phenomenal shape. But you still didn't like the way you looked? Is that what you're saying? Nope. Nope. You would look in the mirror and you, I, I would look in the mirror. I would roll my skin and try and guess my body fat percentage. Oh my gosh. And it was bad. I was weighing myself probably five times a day at least. Um, it was just not a good relationship with food or my body. I was spending hours upon hours putting my food in a food app to then change it throughout the day, but still have to keep a consistent amount. If I went over on my food, I was cutting my calories extremely low for days to come just to make up for it. It wasn't a good relationship. And so I realized that I needed help at that point in time. And I also realized that what I thought was my passion and my purpose, which has never changed, it's always remained the same. And it's always been to help people feel more confident and comfortable in themselves. But I realized that I wasn't really doing that. I was just scratching the surface of how people could bypass actually dealing with that at its core level. And so that's when I started with the Institute of Eating Psychology. 
And there I really learned how to improve my relationship with food. And, you know, I kind of fell out of coaching people at that point in time. Um, it just was no longer a big part of my life. Once, once I healed my relationship with food and my body, I didn't, I don't know, it just wasn't empowering and what I wanted to do anymore, but I still had this drive to want to help people feel more confident and comfortable in themselves. And during that whole transition, I started working at MBS Highway where I work now. And at the time it felt like kind of a letdown, like I'm giving up my passion, I'm giving up my purpose, sure. I'm going to this job that's, yep. you know, an eight to five job. But with everything, once you kind of start to go into it and dive yourself into it, you start to see where you can grow. And maybe I'm just this kind of person, but I'm constantly seeking, you know, how I can help with things, how I can help things grow, and also how I can serve my purpose. Because thankfully, I kind of knew what my passion and my purpose was years ago. And so then I started helping people get more comfortable and confident with promoting themselves and their business online. And I kind of came term as the queen of social video, helping right. people get more confident and comfortable with themselves. And, and I love that because it's really allowed me to kind of help serve my purpose in a bigger way. And that's, that's where the idea of the podcast kind of started. Because yes, everything was going great with MBS Highway, but I realized that when I was in my bodybuilding space, it was a lot easier to have these deeper conversations with people that could really change their life. Whereas in the mortgage space, people were a little less willing to kind of go into those deeper conversations. And so I loved the idea of coming out with this podcast that wasn't so much, here's how you can improve your business, right. do these 10 steps. Right. It was more so, here's the struggle and the hardships that I had to go through in order to get to where I am today. And all these successful people that we look at from Barry Habib to Cindy Ertman to Renee Rodriguez, who you bring up at an Amplify event. So I had this idea to do a podcast a while back, it was actually an idea that I wanted to do with Barry and we were going to co-host it, but it never ended up taking extra moves. It just was an idea and it stayed at, at an idea. And I watched Barry do all these other things, you know, write a book, do all these successful things within the business space. And I was just sitting here like, I want to do this podcast. I want to do this podcast. And so when I was at Amplify, which and man, if any of you are looking to improve <laughs> your skills as a public speaker, and not just that, but show up in your relationships better and your life better, Amplify is an amazing experience to do just that. He will break you down to build you back up again, and you will come out understanding the psychology of the mind and how you can articulate that in your words and your body language. But, you know, I was, I, before I we get into Amplify, yeah. though, and move forward, <clears throat> you said something that hit right. me uh, because you said, you know, you talked about your personal why and helping people feel comfortable um, being open and vulnerable, I guess, to the world since we're everybody's seeing this. Like, I struggle with that, and I'm sure that other people do as well. Like, I, I've been working out uh, three, four days a week. Uh, I'm not comfortable uh, like, you know, if you go, I live on a lake, if I, if I'm going swimming, I'm the nerdy guy with like a swim shirt on. If we go to, you know, vacation, we have like a president's club trip. I'm usually not in the pool enjoying myself with the team because I don't feel comfortable. And I've, I've, I've been on this like fitness journey for a while and I'm trying to take it slow. I'm a high D, so I want success tomorrow. That's not happening okay. obviously in, in, with fitness. So I'm trying to be patient and I have lost some weight and got, you know, in a little bit better shape, but I'm still kind of like you said, like you were at the, the pinnacle of your fitness and you still weren't happy. So maybe you can coach me and help me because I'm not finding that happiness and I'm not confident uh, in myself with that. It's tough. And I will say that it has been a journey that has taken me years to get to where I'm at. And it also is like, it's an everyday experience in an everyday kind of healing process but it all comes down to you know what is your mindset for wanting to achieve these certain goals 
And as far as accepting yourself at any point, no matter where your body's at, no matter what your face looks like, what your sound sounds like, because these are the number one things I hear as of currently when I'm trying to get people to do more social video, is it all comes down to what are you doing on a daily basis to progress towards your goals? And what is your why behind the actions that you're taking? So the way that I can kind of relate to this is before I would exercise based off of a fear of gaining weight. Now I exercise based off a belief that I do this for my body so that I can be in a body that is going to continue to to be there for me, to support me, to carry me through life. And I want to treat my body with respect. And that's where the mindset is different. But if you're always attacking your health and your fitness goals from the mindset of, I only do this because I'm uncomfortable in my body, you're always going to be uncomfortable. Gotcha. And it's really just coming to a point of accepting who you are as you are and then taking those initiatives every single day. So if I were to eat a, a gallon of ice cream every single day and I'm sitting here saying, you know, you need to love your body and love the skin that you're in. And I'm sitting here binging on ice cream every single night. Well, there's kind of a disconnect there. But if I'm willing to sit down and accept myself for what I look like right now and the body that I'm in and the body that God gave me. Mm -hmm. But every day I'm coming from the aspect of I'm going to make these decisions because I want to respect my body and I love my body and I want it to carry me forward and health and happiness. Well, I'm not going to eat that gallon of ice cream every single day. Am I? Right. No, right. I'm going to eat healthier foods that make me feel good. Not foods that are going to make me lose weight but foods that are going to make me feel good. And I'm going to start to get more curious about foods. How do they react to my body? How do they make me feel? And you get less judgmental, but it's the same kind of thing, whether you're approaching it from an aspect of physical fitness or, you know, whether you want to start promoting your, your business through social video, or you want to take, take on a new podcast or whatever the case may be. So I would just personally recommend sit down, accept yourself, for who you are right now and think about that why and what those actions are and try and shift that belief and notice if it's coming from a fear-based belief right i know it's weird people watch and be like dude how does the video guy that's done it for a decade not like the way he looks because we both hear that all the time like i don't want to do video because i don't like the way they look and he struggles with you know body image i don't know i'm just being real like i i do and i'm gonna work hard and hopefully one day i can find you know the can uh, just be happy with who I am in the body that I am in. And regardless right now, I'm, I'm definitely healthier. You know, I just had a health scare with my chest and I went to the doctor and the ER and they admitted and they checked my heart and everything else. And, you know, the good news is like, man, you're good, you know? And so because I've been eating better and working out, um, I think that's a big part of that. You know, my family has cancer uh, that that's been a part of our family and deaths. And my grandfather's died at a young age from skin cancer and heart, heart disease. So I was kind of going in there going, all right, it's my time, you know, like I've already lived past my grandfather, but it wasn't. And it was because of, it's kind of just, I've fell in love with the journey. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't achieved, achieved the success that I want yet, but I knew if I could at least fall in love with the journey of it, that I'll, I'll, I'll continue until hopefully one day I get happy. So knowing you uh, for a few years now, you've, definitely have a theme of pushing past fear. You've talked about it already. Uh, was Amplify, because you were talking about that before I interrupted you, was, was Amplify important part of that? Or had you already kind of oh, yeah. learned to push past that fear? Because I know it changed my life. I've shared a little bit on the show about my experience, but I'm curious about yours. Amplify definitely changed the way that I show up in the world and the way that I communicate with people and how I get my message across. And a bigger aspect of that is, you know, I'm, I'm really good friends with Renee and the whole aspect of where it really helps with the podcast is Amplify was over waiting to kind of go for my flight. I had a few hours, he had a few hours. So we're sitting down at the coffee shop. That's just at the, at the hotel that was hosting Amplify. And I started talking to him about the podcast 
And I wasn't sure what I wanted to call it, which if you're going to get an idea into implementing something, Mm -hmm. you really need to gain clarity on all these different aspects from what you want it to be called to why are you doing this? What is your purpose of doing this? To what do you want people to feel that are listening to this? You have to gain clarity on the whole idea. And he helped me gain clarity after talking to him and verbally putting it out in the open of what my kind of idea was. Like I knew how I wanted people to feel. I knew the kind of conversations that I wanted to have. I knew that I wanted it to not be so tactful like a lot of podcasts are in this space, but I wasn't sure what to call it. And the name of the podcast, I have to give all the kudos to this to Renee Rodriguez because he came up with the idea for the podcast name. And once I heard it, I was like, that's it. Okay, I'm done. I'm ready to take action on this. And another thing that I really recommend from taking something from just an idea to implementing it is, I don't know, what I would, where I would be without the people in my life that push and excel me and believe in me. You know, it's really easy to hang out with friends that kind of keep us at this low level that they're super fun to party with on the weekends. They're the people that you want to go grab a drink with. But it's really important that you constantly are choosing how you spend your extra time and the people that you keep around. You know, you want to be surrounded by people that hold you accountable to these ideas and these goals that you have, people that help you kind of gain clarity on what these goals are and just push and excel you. And so that's another really big reason that I took away. Is I that took what that pushed you past the fear? Well. Because I know the other day you were on another interview, you were talking about how you were fearful to even be on the phone. And yeah. now like you're on stage. Uh, you're, you're on video every day, you got your own podcast, like take me back to that point. Like, how did you go from fear of being on the phone Uh, to all, you know, badass Megan Anderson? Because I, all of our, a lot of our viewers will have ideas and we're talking about taking ideas and implement, like idea to implementation. You're doing that at a high level in several different ways that we just discussed, but most people are back here stuck on the fear and executives don't click out because let's be honest we all have fears it may not drive your life like some other people Mm -hmm. but fear will stop many of our ideas our big ideas and you that's why i wanted to talk to you you've worked past that so many times how did you get past that i think you shared a story maybe it was barry but somebody kept continue throwing you like in the deep end and forcing you to get in that situation so was it kind of some of the people that you've started to connect with that helped you get past those fears what was it Definitely having people around to constantly push me out of my comfort zone was key. But also, you know, it highly depends on where I was at in life of what was driving this fear and how I overcame it. But you brought up the example of, you know, hating being on the phone. But at that point in time in my life, I had fallen out of love with coaching individuals. And I didn't know where I was at career-wise. I didn't know what it was that I wanted to do. And I had this opportunity at MBS Highway where, you know, I started off with sales. And, you know, if you're going to be successful at sales, you're either not going to make any money money, or you're going to land some sales and you're going to make some money. Sink or swim. And so (laughs) sink or swim. And so there really was no other option. And I personally know that, like, things that drive me are – you know, having high credibility and doing these things. So I just knew that in my mind for me to be credible and for me to build a reputation and be successful and whatever step I was going to take next in life, I had to get over this fear. And so that's how I started to get over the fear of talking on the phone. And, you know, there was a lot more to that story than, you know, we can dive into, but it was also being prepared. It was making sure that I knew who I was calling and knew everything about them so that I felt comfortable that I could answer any questions and sound good on the phone. Like there was so much more involved in just deciding, you know, I'm going to get over this that day. But it kind of feels like that at the end of the day. Like when we go back and we look at these fears that we've overcome, it almost feels like it was like a one day transition. But in reality, it's not. It's all these small steps that accumulate to 
that one big moment when we decide that we're not going to let fear control our life anymore. Sure, it can sit in the car with us, but it can sit in the back seat. The <laughs> I love seat. that analogy. That's awesome. It can sit with the, in the car with us, but it's going to be in the back seat and hopefully in the trunk and then maybe maybe not a passenger <laughs> <laughs> at some point in our life. I mean, we all had fear. I, I loved you, what you said about the incremental steps. You didn't get to 40 from zero to 40 you know, episodes, the first one and then the second one and the third one. And whatever idea, and, and because we both do video and we've traveled, RC and I, a lot, we hear that as a roadblock to their success is I don't know where to start. I don't know, like the way I look, the way I sound. And we everybody that's been there, done that, including you, it's like just and Jake Failing, who's another one, just hit record. It won't be the, the best one you've ever done. But guess what? You'll get a second at bat, a third, and it'll get better and better and better. And I just want to encourage people to get, like you said, that increment. You like, you don't have to go zero to a hundred, zero to one for today. Mm -hmm. Let's take a, a baby step to get over that, that fear, whatever it is. You know, I was talking to you in the green room, two high level producers. I, I sp spent the week with in Idaho, masterminding, very, very, very successful top 1% in their craft. And both of them have struggled with doing what you're already doing, which is starting a podcast. I, I like both their ideas. I like both their themes. And one of them's had it for a year. The other one's had it for a short amount of time. And I don't know if we, we could have them on the show. Maybe, maybe it is fear driven. Maybe they're too busy. I don't know. But I think deep down inside, if they're honest, uh, like the most of us, like fear can, pre you know, prevent yeah. us from doing some of the really cool things. And there's a beautiful side of just jumping in, like mm -hmm. the jumping in the deep end. Like, you know, some of the examples you're talking about, just getting thrown into these situations where you have to sink or swim. There's a really beautiful side to it. Because I promise you guys, you're you're gonna swim. More There's often than not, you're beautiful gonna, side to that. You're gonna swim. I'm telling you, yeah. Of all the people that I've interviewed on the podcast, and I can't wait to get you on there. <laughs> but of all the people that I've interviewed on there, the most successful ones were thrown into a position where they had to either sink or swim. They were either gonna be successful or fail miserably. Yeah. And some of them did fail for a while but then they succeeded. They kept pushing through and that's what you got to do at the end of the day. You just got to keep pushing. You got to keep learning. You have to keep adapting and you're bound to succeed if you can continue to do that. Yeah. And let's define fail. So a lot of people, you know, it's defined a couple different ways. So let's, let's just say podcast since we're, you know, you have a podcast. Oh, Ryan, I did a podcast and only seven people listened to it. I failed. Well, no, did you? Because you sat, you sat on this idea for a year. You didn't implement anything, mm -hmm. but now you've got a podcast. You know what it takes to, to get one done, to edit it, to, to, you know, to share it on social or wherever you, like you didn't fail anywhere, you know, there. Yeah. Now, sure, we want to get more people to watch, but you didn't fail. Like, you can't just throw everything out because maybe, uh, you know, not enough people watched. You've got to take your wins, which was I finally implemented an idea, whether it's a video podcast, you know, starting a new branch, a new new business, a uh, new profession. Like there's baby steps, as Megan said, and you got to celebrate those wins. So don't be careful how we define failure, right? Yes, be careful how you define failure. failure. And I love the fact that you mentioned we have to celebrate our little wins because for some reason as humans, we just innately do this, but we don't allow ourselves to experience joy to its fullest. And part of experiencing joy is appreciating these small goals that you hit. And I'm telling you, I know that I'm young. So I know that all of you can relate to this that are listening to this. And I'm not calling you olds that are listening to this. I'm just saying you all call me young. So I'm mentioning that. But I'm telling you, how many times have you completed a goal and it just gets kind of disappointing after that. It is the process of reaching that goal that is the most fun part, but mm -hmm. we never allow ourselves to appreciate and really enjoy those small wins. But the second we reach the big win, we're depressed. And now it's like, yeah. well, now what? Yep. So enjoy and soak up all that you can of these little small moments and these achievements that you're doing, because that, that's really the big win. I love that. Gary V talks about that too. He shared his personal story about conquering his major mountain and then having kind of a letdown. Mm -hmm. But that goes back to a saying that I, I think it was Blake Griffin, MBA, and somebody asked him how to get the MBA. And it was this, the quote I said earlier, which is, you got to fall in love with the process of becoming great. Most people fall in love with the dream. 
and not the process. Mm -hmm. And so if you accomplish something huge, like Gary Vee said, like if he ever gets to buy the Jets, that's his huge thing. Uh, there, there's going to be a letdown because he says you got you got to fight another mountain to climb. You know, whether you've achieved a weight loss goal or I've always wanted to be an executive or whatever. I, I wanted to do 100 million as a realtor or a loan officer. I hit it. You might feel that letdown. And Gary Vee talks about it a lot. But if you fall in love with the process of becoming great, all you got to do is identify that next mountain because you've already fallen in love with the process of it. So it'll be a lot easier to climb that second mountain. I don't. I didn't think we were going to go there today, but uh, you teed it up, and I'm, I'm glad that we did. I'm glad we did, too. Well, we've gone long, 20 minutes. I know you're super busy. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I, I want to have you on a third time. I felt like we just started getting into the really, really good stuff. But um, I know that you're super relatable for everybody watching that has ideas, whatever they may be, and fear has kept them from getting there. Um, follow Megan. Follow her podcast. Uh, and you're a great example, and I, I just appreciate everything you've done for our industry. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. We'll see you next week.